another new day has risen on the Sierra and Cascade forest ranges in California. And with that new day comes a changing of the shift in the network of life that thrives in that region. The cold, pristine waters of the Sierra supports the lives of all Californians, wildlife and humans alike. Today, the water and diversity of the entire range is threatened as mechanized clear-cutting and the conversion of the forest to tree farms have depleted the Cascade Sierra forests to the tipping point. This awe-inspiring, life-supporting gift that belongs to our unborn great-great-great-grandchildren soon may cease to be forever. Today, lifelong residents Randy and Rocky Compton are taking to the air to document the devastating results of massive clear-cutting in Battle Creek region along Mount Lassen National Park. Beneath their flight, Battle Creek Alliance Director Marilee Woodhouse embarks on routine water quality monitoring above, in, and below timber operations. The Battle Creek watershed has been deemed the state's best chance at restoring a large Chinook salmon population. So much so, the state has placed a $125 million taxpayer-funded salmon restoration project in the watershed. The problem is, above the salmon project, clear-cut timber operations are amongst the heaviest in the state. These clear cuts, also known as silviculture, are between 20 and 30 acres. California boasts stiff timber rules, but in five years, the forest between these clear cuts can also be deforested, finishing off the original forest forever. These Battle Creek cuts and thousands of others across the state are the work of Sierra Pacific Industries. SPI is owned by a single family, the Red Emerson family, out of Redding, California. The Emersons are the largest private landowner in California, with 1.7 million acres under their stewardship. Now, environmental groups across California have united and are mobilizing a campaign to raise public awareness, litigate lawsuits, and stop clear-cutting in California. See, that's been over 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. It took that long for that little tree to get as big as it is. And that's what I told the foresters. How many years it's gonna take, there'll never be no loggers in here because there's not gonna be anything to log. With you clear cutting, the earth is gonna get hot. There's nothing to keep the earth cool. You know, not only are they the lungs, there are lungs and they're keeping our soil in place, but they're also a canopy that's blocking out the sunlight. And that sunlight, once you take that canopy away, this soil temperature is going to increase many degrees. And that's going to take away, you know, suddenly natural seeding isn't going to take effect anymore because natural seedlings aren't going to be able to drop, germinate, and grow. It's going to be too hot and dry because the sun's going to be beaten down on the dirt. And that's why brush grows and takes over after they clear cut. That's why they have to spray. So what they're doing is they're creating a problem and then they're using another problem to fix it. Anyway, it seems like the clear cutting is undermining the topsoil that provides a foundation for roots to grow in. Soon it's all going to erode away and I don't think there'll be enough topsoil to support any new or old growth. Suddenly your, your microbes aren't breaking down everything like they're supposed to because it's too hot and dry. Mm -hmm. Microbes need a couple things. They need the right environment. They need moisture. They need the right temperature. And then they break down the organic matter. And that's how everything grows. It breaks it down, turns it into nutrients, takes it back up in the trees. It's a cycle. As soon as they take that canopy away, the soil is going to be, the soil temperature is going to go up. The microbes are going to quit working. And, and it, it once again, it's just another step into sterilization of the soil. 
Well, probably one of the most vulnerable parts of the forest is the microbiological order just underneath the earth, and wherever you disturb that, you disturb the forest. For instance, when they burn slash, it takes years for the mitochondria to come back into the earth. In other words, nothing will grow there. There's no biological activity. And, uh, <clears throat> and But interestingly enough, forest fires don't do that because the fire doesn't remain on the ground long enough to have a long uh, effect. But where they stack up trees and slash burn, it affects the earth continually. But the mitochondria that provides all the little organisms on the on the floor of the fur forest is what provides the bacteriological environment for the seedlings and the uh, and the protective trees like the oaks to grow. And uh, that all has to be there for the forest to exist. You know, also that, that mycelium attaches to the roots of the pine trees and actually feeds some of them provides are, oh yeah, some of them are nutrients coated. to the pine Maybe trees. Maybe that's why, because we just went up here, dude, and there's a big clear cut up here, mm -hmm. and all around the edges, all the pine trees are dying. Even yeah. ones that are back in 50, 60 feet away from the edge of the clear cut, mm -hmm. they're all dying. Yeah. They, under, they broke the link. Yeah. 